to the Board of Selectmen, February 10th, 2020 meeting. Please join me in a salute to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We're going to start this evening. Uh, obviously, Rick Griffin, Chairman Griffin, is not here tonight, so I'll be sitting in. Uh, we're going to start this evening with fire department officers swearing in, so I'm going to turn it over to Chief Ayotte. Thank you, sir. I appreciate that. Thank you very much, and the board, for your time and indulgence. We do appreciate it. Uh, this evening, we have a great deal of people that we're going to be recognizing. Um, we have had a tremendous amount of movement and promotions and new hires this year. Uh, it's going to continue in the upcoming season. Um, we're going to be starting right now with a 29-year veteran of the fire department. His name is Brian Watt, formerly serving as a lieutenant. This evening, we're going to be swearing him in as a captain. So I invite Captain Wise to join us. <laughs> From the town of Hampton in the county of Rockingham to Brian C. Weiser of Hampton Falls, New Hampshire, in the county of Rockingham. Whereas there is a vacancy in the office of fire captain in said town, and whereas we, the subscribers, have confidence in your abilities and integrity to perform the duties of said office, we do hereby appoint you, said Brian C. Weiser, as fire captain of said town. And upon taking the oath of office, and of having this appointment in the certificate of said oath of office recorded by the town clerk, you shall have the powers, perform the duties, and be subject to the liabilities of such office until another person shall be chosen and qualified in your stead. Given under my hand this 10th day of February, Fred Rel Welch, Town Manager. If you could raise your right hand and repeat after me, please. I, Brian C. Weiser. I, Brian C. Weiser. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will bear faith and true allegiance. Faith, bear, and true allegiance to the United States of America, to the United States of America, in the state of New Hampshire, in the state of New Hampshire, and will support the constitutions thereof, and will support the constitutions thereof, so help me God, so help me God, I, Brian C. Weiser, I, Brian C. Weiser, do solemnly and sincerely, do solemnly and sincerely, swear and affirm, swear and affirm, that I will faithfully and impartially, that I will faithfully and impartially, discharge and perform, discharge and perform, all the duties incumbent on me, all the duties incumbent on me. As a fire captain. As a fire captain. According to the best of my abilities. According to the best of my abilities. Agreeably to the rules and regulations. Agreeably to the rules and regulations. Of this constitution. Of this constitution. And the laws of the state of New Hampshire. And the laws of the state of New Hampshire. So help me God. So help me God. From the town of Hampton in the county of Rockingham to Nathan E. Denio of Hampton, New Hampshire, in the county of Rockingham, whereas there is a vacancy in the office of fire lieutenant in said town, and whereas we, the subscribers, have confidence in your ability and integrity to perform the duties of said office, we do hereby appoint you, said Nathan E. Denio, as a fire lieutenant of said town, and upon taking the oath of office and having this appointment and the certificate of said oath of office recorded of, by the town clerk, you shall have the powers, perform the duties, and be subject to the liabilities of such office until another person shall be chosen and qualified in your stead. 
begin under my hand this 10th day of February, 2020, Fred Welsh, Town Manager. Raise your right hand, look after me please. I, Nathan E. Denio. I, Nathan E. Denio. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will bear faith and true allegiance. That I will bear faith and true allegiance. To the United States of America. To the United States of America. In the state of New Hampshire. In the state of New Hampshire. And will support the constitutions thereof. And will support the constitutions thereof. So help me God. So help me God. I, Nathan E. Denio. Do solemnly and sincerely. Do solemnly and sincerely. Swear and affirm. Swear and affirm. That I will faithfully and impartially. That I will faithfully and impartially. Discharge and perform. Discharge and perform. All duties incumbent on me. All duties incumbent on me. As a fire lieutenant. As a fire lieutenant. According to the best of my abilities. According to the best of my abilities. Agreeably to the rules and regulations. Agreeably to the rules and regulations. Of this constitution. Of this constitution. And the laws of the state of New Hampshire. And the laws of the state of New Hampshire. So help me God. So help me God. Nathan was our EMS officer for the last five years, um, and in his movement to the lieutenant side of the house, it opens up a vacancy for EMS officer. This evening, I'm happy to recognize Kate Meehan, who is, uh, has been with the fire department for 15 years. So, Kate, why don't you come on up? EMS officer. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. From the town of Hampton in the county of Rockingham, to Catherine M. Meehan of Portsmouth, New Hampshire, in the county of Rockingham. Whereas there is a vacancy in the Office of Emergency Medical Services Officer in said town, and whereas we, the subscribers, have confidence in your abilities and integrity to perform the duties of said office, we do hereby appoint you, the said Catherine M. Meehan, as an Emergency Medical Services Officer of said town. And upon your taking oath of office and having this appointment and the certificate of said oath of office recorded by the town clerk, you shall have the powers, perform the duties, and be subject to the liabilities of such office until another person shall be chosen and qualified in your stead. Given under my hand this 10th day of February, 2020, Fred Welch, Town Manager. You can raise your right hand and repeat after me. I, Catherine M. Meehan, do solemnly swear. That I will bear faith and true allegiance. That I will bear faith and true allegiance to the United States of America. To the United States of America and the state of New Hampshire. And the state of New Hampshire. And will support the constitutions thereof. And will support the constitutions thereof. So help me God. So help me God. I, Catherine M. Meehan. I, Catherine M. Meehan. Do solemnly and sincerely. Do solemnly and sincerely. Swear and affirm. Swear and affirm that I will faithfully and impartially. That I will faithfully. Discharge and perform. Discharge and perform. All the duties encumbered on me. All the duties encumbered on me. As an emergency medical services officer. As an emergency medical services officer. According to the best of my abilities. According to the best of my abilities. Agreeably to the rules and regulations. Agreeably to the rules and regulations. Of this constitution. Of this constitution. And the laws of the state of New Hampshire. And the laws of the state of New Hampshire. So help me God. So help me God. Thank you. started with us on January 27th and has been working days so he just got appointed and last night was his first yesterday was his first 24. From the town of Hampton in the county of Rockingham 
to Joseph Isabel of South Berwick, Maine, in the County of York. Whereas there is a vacancy in the office of firefighter in said town, and whereas we, the subscribers, have confidence in your ability and integrity to perform the duties of said office, we do hereby appoint you, said as Joseph Isabel, as firefighter of said town, and upon your taking oath of office, having this appointment and the certificate of said oath of office recorded by the town clerk, you shall have the powers, perform the duties, and be subject to the liabilities of such office until another person shall be chosen and qualified in your stead. Given under my hand this 10th day of February, 2020, Fred Welsh, town manager. I can ask you to raise your right hand and repeat after me. I, Joseph Isabel, I, Joseph Isabel do, solemnly swear do solemnly swear that I will bear faith and true allegiance, I will bear faith and true allegiance to the United States of America and the state of New Hampshire, the state of New Hampshire, and will support the constitutions thereof, and will support the constitutions thereof. So help me God. So help me God. I, Joseph Isabel, I, Joseph Isabel, do solemnly and sincerely, do solemnly and sincerely, swear and affirm, swear and affirm, that I will faithfully and impartially, that I will faithfully and impartially, discharge and perform, discharge and perform, all the duties encumbered on me, all the duties encumbered upon me, as firefighter, as firefighter, according to the best of my abilities, according to the best of my abilities, agreeably to the rules and regulations, agreeably to the rules and regulations of this constitution, of this constitution, and the laws of the state of New Hampshire, the laws of the state of New Hampshire. So help me God. So help me God. Chief, we'll just take a minute and let each member of the board, Absolutely. if they'd like to congratulate the uh, individuals. Go ahead, Mary Louise, you oh, can start. I, I, you couldn't join a better department in the whole world. You're all lucky to be here with Chief Ayotte, and we love all of you. I will concur to that. We have the uh, best fire department, in my view. Thank you all. I know a lot of these men and women here. Some of them I grew up with. I am <laughs> proud of every one of them. Thank you. Great day. Yeah, I'd just like to congratulate everybody and congratulate everybody tonight that's being promoted. And we do have the best fire department. We have the best trained, the best motivated. Amen. And we're a small town during the winter. We're a city during the summer. And you guys do a great job. Thank you very much. Okay. You want to read? Yeah, well, I just, I have been reading uh, to you and to the public. Uh, some of the letters that we get in from grateful citizens who've had a response from our <coughs> fire department. And once again, another uh, January 18th, another letter from another resident. Uh, my purpose in writing is to extend my deep appreciation for the highly professional service I received last evening from two of your emergency medical services team members. The prompt response, the extremely high level of courtesy, respect, and working knowledge of emergency medical practices is a demonstrated level of care that far exceeds every requirement for medical services in the field. 
Please extend my gratitude to everyone involved for a job well done. My thoughts and prayers for good health and happiness to you and the entire department. And he is mentioning uh, Firefighter 7 and Brillard who responded to his emergency call. We get letters all the time like that because of wonderful, wonderful members of the fire department like you. Thank you, Chief. Did they have an active uh, town meeting, or uh, sorry, board of selectmen meeting? So what we're going to do is take a, a small pause and ask everybody to leave. And then if you wouldn't mind going upstairs so that they can conduct the meeting, that would be great. Thank you all so much for coming. We really appreciate it. Welcome, we're back live. We're gonna to start tonight with uh, a public hearing, RSA 287-I col uh, colon six. Uh, and we're gonna, at 918, we're gonna open up, uh, I'm sorry, 1918, we're gonna open up the public hearing. Shall we allow the operation of sports book retail locations within the town of Hampton? This is the first of three public hearings. And is there anybody from the public wishing to uh, comment on this? Yeah. Go ahead, Mr. Nevin, just come up to the, and just uh, identify yourself and your address. Good evening, Chris Nevins, 36 Ashbrook Drive. Uh, Chairman Waddell and uh, ladies and gentlemen of the uh, select board, thank you for allowing me to come up. 
it wasn't too long ago, about a week, a little bit more than a week ago, uh, we were talking about this very same subject, about sports betting uh, here in the town of Hampton. And I am here once again to advocate uh, for what many of us, not just myself, think is going to be a very important issue for uh, our state. As we well know, we have uh, two uh, casinos down at the beach, but one has been really uh, a great citizen to the town of Hampton. Uh, with Ocean Gaming Casino, we've got 35 of our charities, of which uh, I help manage three of them, that uh, benefit from uh, charitable gaming, from bingo, and now, for sure, if it comes, sports betting. And uh, these, this really makes a big difference for a lot of our charities. The income that they get would not exist, or they... You even couldn't beg for enough uh, to, get to make things move. And I know with the American Legion and uh, some other military groups that I deal with, uh, they are very, very grateful. We're set up. We're set up down there with uh, the Ocean Gaming. And the reason I mention them is not only do they have a fine gaming consultant. By the way, I'm not a gambler. I, uh, <laughs> if I go back, I could tell you that... Uh, the last time I gambled, I was a second lieutenant uh, at Moody Air Force Base in Georgia. And I'm in the back room of the officers club, and I was going to show them my superior skill and cunning in rolling dice. And it uh, lasted about 20 minutes when I decided that was probably not my going to be my career basis. But, but I, understand, I understand the real world, and it's fine with me, and I, I make no judgments at all. Matter of fact, I learned a lot more about gambling uh, when I ran for state representative. After I went and talked to many of our town's folks, I was actually surprised to hear how come we don't have more, how come this is not allowed and that is not allowed. And I have to admit, at that time I didn't know. I know more now. So what we have uh, to get back on our situation, if we can accept sports betting here at Hampton, we know with, I mean, already we've had, what, $4 million in the state uh, that's been gambled, and uh, so there is some benefit, and that's just started. But we know the town of Hampton, and I want to focus on the town of Hampton, will benefit from this. A gambling, what we'll call a casino, and we know that's, that's the word that we use for the smaller gambling establishments, is a business, like any other business. Uh, if the economy is good, it will do well. If the economy is not good, it may not do too well at all. Mm -hmm. It all depends, like any other business. Uh, but gambling has existed uh, probably, I hate to say, I won't use the terms of how long it's been, but probably most of our lives, I'm sure. Uh, and what I see there is a lot of good being done. Uh, how many meetings have we gone, let's say, 15, 20 years ago when the beach hadn't been rebuilt and uh, things were going down, businesses were leaving, the, the beach was absolutely dead in the winter and uh, we can say things are a little bit different now. They're, obviously it's not the same as our, our city and our town as uh, Chairman Waddell mentioned. The difference is what goes on in the summer and what goes on in the winter. But, th but having them there in the winter has made all the difference in uh, employment uh, some income, additional income, uh, and it does bring people down. Not only, of course, do they have gambling, but they have private parties like any restaurant would, uh, and they, so they bring a lot of people in. Hmm. Now, but there's a lot of competition out there. We know Seabrook uh, is starting to build, and uh, Great Bay Casino in uh, down in uh, Boston, uh, that's, that's come out now, uh, and up in Maine, and uh, it's competition. But should they be competition for us if we can provide what our locals and even northern Massachusetts and southern Maine folks might want to come here, not only in the summer but in the winter, at a fr home-friendly casino with great food and a restaurant and uh, great personalities and uh, all they want for a pleasant evening. So again, I would encourage my fellow residents of Hampton, uh, pick this over, even if, even if you don't like gambling, and I certainly understand that. There are some people, by the way, some of the funds now, because of the way the state set up the bill, will go uh, to 2% uh, uh, or so for, the, for helping people who have a gambling problem. And I acknowledge that exists. I acknowledge uh, people have alcohol problems. I acknowledge people have drug problems. And I acknowledge people have tobacco problems and many other things. And there are people, places to go to and those kind of programs have to be funded, and this will be self-funding. 
so that's my opinion. I hope um, I hope you will uh, remain positive with gambling here uh, for our town, Hampton. And if there are any questions that I can answer from my perspective, I'd be glad to do so. Thank you, Chris. Thanks, pretty good. Anybody else in the public wish yeah. to be heard? Good evening, uh, John Conforti from the New Hampshire Lottery Commission. Uh, I don't know if I qualify as a member of the public, but I thought I would make myself available. Um, so the Lottery Commission uh, obviously does not take a position advocating um, for passage of a bill, um, but we do like to make ourselves available uh, to answer any questions. Um, I think you've gotten a great description of what this bill is about. Um, RSA 287I was passed last July. It has three different channels of sports betting. The first one, is a mobile uh, form on your phone uh, or through the internet, which launched uh, at the end of December um, and has been quite successful through the first um, five weeks or so that we've had that open. The second piece of that would be retail locations in different uh, municipalities, and that is the issue that would be before you um, if this were to go on the on the warrant article um, for you to bet in, uh, excuse me, for you to vote in March. Um, so this will be uh, a certain number of uh, facilities, no more than 10 throughout the state, where people could physically come in uh, and bet on sports. Um, and we're looking to have uh, those up and running, uh, hopefully the first part of this year, um, and then be rolled out one at a time uh, over the next several years. Um, so just to speak to the responsible gaming piece of this that legislation um, did include uh, the first creation of a public entity um, dedicated to responsible gaming um, and did fund it through lottery funds at uh, up to two hundred and fifty thousand dollars every year um, and then there are additional funds that are coming from health and human services to also support that cause um, so that is a great step forward as we obviously expand gambling options that we also uh, expand um, the tools available to people who may have a problem with gambling. Um, so I'm happy to answer any questions that okay, the board we'll may have. Board, Mary Louise, do you have any questions? Uh, well, I read that Maine wanted to restrict um, within, I think they said half a mile of the Maine New Hampshire border, that they didn't want any gambling stuff. But now it looks like in Maine, they're going to go through with this as well. So Maine is in the process of an override of a veto, mm -hmm. um, and it, it did. Uh, the override succeeded in the Senate. Um, I'm not sure if it's passed in the House, but I think it is expected to. Um, so we are expecting that Maine will have sports betting uh, relatively soon. So we may not have a problem with our neighbors in Maine. We may not have a problem with our neighbors in Maine. No, I, I think they've um, come up, come along to. Uh, favoring sports betting over the last several months. So. Okay, thank you. Regina? I just have one question. So if the town meeting passes a sports betting warrant article, is Ocean Gaming guaranteed to be one of those 10? They are not. So that um, that is uh, dependent on a process uh, with our contractor. Our contractor is DraftKings. Um, DraftKings is responsible to um, select specific locations um, that they come to an agreement with and then present them to the Lottery Commission. Um, again, those can be up to 10 different locations. So at this point in the process, we signed the contract with DraftKings in uh, November of 2019. They are not uh, going to present us with any specific options until after the town votes here in March. Um, so there's no, I want to be very clear that there's no guarantees of any specific uh, municipality um, getting a location at this point in time. It is merely the town um, providing a uh, eligibility that um, they would welcome an establishment if um, both DraftKings and the Lottery Commission find one that they're willing to partner with. So passage of the warrant article would mean that we, as a town of Hampton, are uh, you know, welcoming Ocean Gaming and, and participating in this. That Exactly. It would give the town's blessing that that is eligible. And of course, um, the Lottery Commission in the RFP process and in the contracting process we wanted uh, the existing charitable gaming facilities to take precedence over any other facilities because they're licensed already, um, they've had criminal background checks, um, they have surveillance, they have con um, cash controls, and obviously also they support charitable gaming um, in the state, they support the charities um, as was uh, spoken to before. Um, so we are going to focus on those particular entities, but yes, we're going to look uh, at what 
towns pass this um, during this March. Um, but I just want to make clear that that doesn't, I'm not, we're not guaranteeing any particular facility is going to get one within any particular given uh, point in time. Yeah, I understand that. I just, it was made known tonight and it's definitely known townwide that Ocean Gaming does a lot for the community here. So that's all I wanted to understand. Thank you. No, I think it's a, it's a good thing for the town. Uh, I think it'd be nice if we can pass it. It'll also be nice if, if we can get one in Hampton. Uh, but again, that's a roll of the dice, so to say. Yeah. But uh, thank you for coming in. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else in the public wishing to speak on this? Charlie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Charlie Preston, Glade Path. You know, I just wanted to say I totally support this. Ocean Gaming's done a phenomenal job. For the people at home that aren't familiar with Ocean Gaming, it's uh, what the old beach would call Giovanni's, corner of K Street and Ocean Boulevard. Yep. It's an 18 plus venue. Okay. I'm the, um, I gotta put my glasses on here. I'm not a big gambler, but I like to put it in a wager on occasion. But I can tell you there's another reason to go down here. You can get something to eat, you can get a great pizza. You can you can have anything from a Coca-Cola to an alcoholic beverage. There's a great view of the ocean, there's a deck outside. And for anybody that's been in business at Hampton Beach the last 10 years year round, that's impressive. Because it hasn't happened in multiple decades. For the other thing of people at home, whether you're a gambler or not, there's free parking until April Fools. So take advantage of it. Go down and check it out. They do a great job. I've never heard. I've never seen any trouble. I've only been going there the last four years. My mom and dad both went when it started. For 10 years they were going. My mom passed four years ago. So I've gone since my mom passed to you know, go see my dad because I know where to find him. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, I'm not a gambler except on occasion, but I don't want to go online. When I do place a wager, I want to walk up to the window, put my money down, and get my ticket. If I win, I come back. If I don't, I throw my ticket away. But the number one reason why I think people in this town should support this, and I think the police chief and the fire chief and the public works and the DOT would all agree, even the town of Seabrook would agree, okay? Traffic. Because you've got a captive audience at the beach. For them to be able to walk into a brick and mortar, that keeps all of those cars off of Route 1, and we should all be trying to do that. You know, we want people to come to Hampton Beach and make that their destination and stay there. We don't want them on Route 1. There's a liquor store in Seabrook Beach for 15 years now. That liquor store has kept a lot of cars off of Route 1, and that's something we should all look at. It's probably one of the most important parts of the whole thing. But uh, thank you very much, and I want to say, go down and try it out. They run a great operation. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else from the public wishing to speak? Uh, Mike Edgar, uh, Seven Hands Terrace. Yeah, I wanted to speak in favor of this. We uh, and I hope that the rest of the uh, the town uh, supports this. I got involved uh, with uh, Ocean Gaming because, uh, through the American Legion, like like Chris did. Um, we started talking about it a few years ago. You know, should we try for this? Um, and there was some question. You know, it's gambling and everything. So uh, and I come from a right a town right next to. Uh, you know, Foxwoods, so you know, there was some concerns. We wanted to check it out, so I went down, and I was really impressed with uh, with their setup. I met Anthony and saw how they ran the place, how clean it was, the people that were there uh, enjoying themselves. Um, it, it was really good, and uh, I'm one of the ones that uh, was down for the 10 days that we have for American Legion. Uh, several of us go down and have to do the signing in every day. So I've been able to continually be going down and kind of checking things out, and then then all, and actually getting further impressed by the way they run the place. Um, and another interesting thing happened when uh, I went down there uh, one of the times, I sat down and ended up talking to people, and uh, this uh, woman started telling about how they, they come to the beach now, they come by every month, they come down for a weekend, they stay overnight someplace, they eat at the restaurants, and they go to Ocean Gaming. So it's, uh, I was really surprised in some ways that uh, got reminded of how something like that can stimulate business all over the place. So um, I'm really impressed with the, with their operation, and I really hope that uh, the town people voted in so that we have a shot at it. Thank you. Thank you. 
Anybody else in the public wishing to speak on this? Uh, All right, seeing none, uh, just ask the town manager. Sir. This is already on the warrant. It right? is on the warrant, sir. So we're having the first public hearing. That's all we need. Is that's one. all we need. That's all we need is one public hearing. Right. Oh. Okay, so we're not voting on anything right. with selectmen, are we? Or? No, sir. Okay. All right, then we're going to be closing this public hearing at uh, 1934. Good. And the police chief has a public service announcement that he was supposed to make before this public hearing, but I forgot. I apologize. That's okay. I have to comment, though. Charlie's the only guy I know in a three-minute speech could bring up Giovanni's and parking free. <laughs> so, the vote tomorrow, okay, as we know, we're, we uh, vote up at Winnicott High School. And generally speaking, they don't, don't, don't schedule school when they have an in-service training day, but they have an SAU-wide service training day. So that means there's going to be a lot more cars competing for the parking spaces up there during the election times. So uh, through some meetings with the manager and going up and dealing with the superintendent staff, we have specific areas we'd ask our folks to park, particularly in the morning and in the lunch period. They're done at 2.30, so the uh, evening, which is usually our busiest time, we should be fine. But during the morning hours and during the lunch period, if you come in off of Winnicott Road, we'd ask you to pull into Lot A, which is the first lot when you come up the road, there'll be an officer there. He'll then either direct you straight up to the cafeteria parking lot, which is Lot C, or to the rear of Lot A, which is behind the ROTC building. We should have sufficient uh, parking spaces to manage the crowd during the rush periods. We just ask everybody to be patient. And if possible, if you could carpool, if you could put a few people in the car that are coming down to vote, that would help the effort uh, so we can get through this as quickly as possible. We do estimate, you know, with what's going on in politics, that probably going to be a pretty good turnout. So if you can delay it till later in the afternoon, that would be great. But if you have to get in before work, if you can do that with somebody else, and just pay attention to the officers, and they'll map out where, they, where you need to go. So. There was one other issue um, you have on your agenda tonight that, I believe it's um, number four, the I Street closure, those issues. One of the other issues that's coming up with that project is the storage of some of the uh, components of the building. Uh, they've requested to use the island path lot. I met with uh, representatives from the company. Um, the time period they want to use it will not impact our summer season. I couldn't give them the front lot in front of the PD simply because the shows at the casino start right at the end of March, and that's about the time they could be coming in there. Uh, it's up to the board, but we have no objection uh, from the police department as the manager of the lot for you. So I just thought I'd drop that out to you. Okay, thank you. Okay. All right, moving on, we'll go to uh, RSA 41 colon 14 dash A public hearing. Hearings, and we're going to open the first one at 1937. Second hearing, 17th Street tax map 168 lot 78. One, release deed restriction number four of seven foot setback for outbuilding. Anybody from the public wishing to be heard on this subject? Good evening, uh, board, uh, town manager. Uh, my name for the record is Henry Boyd with Millennium Engineering and Mrs. M uh, Mr. Parkett are here tonight in the audience. I understand you had a public hearing already on this? This is the second public hearing. This is the pu second public hearing. Um, they are simply asking uh, the deed restriction released for uh, a proposed shed that they're hoping to build here. They really have no place to put their belongings. Uh, they have moved from New York City to make Hampton their hometown uh, year-round now, and they're happy to be here. We're happy to have them, so unless you have any questions, pretty straightforward. Okay. Any questions for the board? Hey, how does this affect the pervious surface on the lot, Henry? Um, I understand that um, there was a presentation before last year, and um, it wasn't explained very well, but they are mm -hmm. under their required sealed surface. They, they can have up to a maximum of 60%. Yeah. The proposal would uh, put the lot at um, 58.6, so they're still under uh, the threshold that they're allowed. And as I understand it, the, the Conservation Commission has looked at this as, as well as the Planning Board and uh, okay. recommended approval. I, I would just say, and it's nice that Henry brought the map, but I would say that if we're going to be looking at these things, and I'm referring to the others on the agenda, it would help if we had a small map picture included with our uh, information for the meeting. I Thank actually you. think we did submit some stuff um, Do you think? in the I original application, but 
Usually um, I clip it all together. I, I wanted to bring it for you just so that you could see that, that we do demonstrate compliance. Mm -hmm. Thank Regina. you. I'm all set. Thank you. Welcome to Hampton. Thank you. Rusty? Yeah, I mean, uh, my package has a map in it, so uh, I got Oh, okay. Questions. Maybe I didn't put it in the right place. All right, I, I have nothing. Welcome, yes. The uh, town attorney has something. Uh, Henry, of course, this uh, same proposal was made last year, but there were some changes to the site. Last year, the planning board and the conservation commission did not recommend it. That's but correct. But the changes that have been made increased the amount of permeable surface. Correct. Um, that. The proposal that went forward that they were allowed to, to do the, the reconstruction or the, the rehab of the house, which they did a beautiful job, most of it was for this covered patio, but also the interior of the home was upgraded. Um, that actually complied with the regulations, but um, I suppose it wasn't spelled out clear enough on the plan. I think Attorney Sari brought it in here, uh, and he, we hadn't spoken before the hearing that he brought, hmm. so I don't think that he was able to, to uh, speak effectively on the sealed surface areas. And when I heard about that, I, I went in and I recalculated everything and updated the plan to, to show that they, in fact, did comply. Um, so actually, uh, although the agenda doesn't fully reflect it, there's actually two aspects to the deed restrictions that need relief. One of them is the seven-foot setback, but the other is the fact that the building uh, it says all buildings and sheds other than stables or garages shall be connected with and attached to the dwelling house. So this is not attached, correct? Uh, the shed is not attached. So that would be, that's the second aspect of relief. Hmm. Can we add that while we're here? <clears throat> Can we add that while we're here? Yes. Um, I believe it was at, it was before the planning board in the... It was. Okay. And that was, that was in the... Yes, the answer is yes, we can. Thank you. Right. Anything else? No. Fred, do you have anything? Nothing, sir. Okay, this is the second hearing. We will... Two weeks from now, you will vote. Two weeks from now, we'll have the third hearing, okay. and we'll vote on it. Okay. Understood. So is there any... Thank you. Is there anybody else in the public wishing to speak on this matter? Seeing none, we will close the public hearing at uh, 1941. Have a good night. Thank you. Have a good night. Thank you, Henry. Now we have the first public hearing. Uh, Second Street Tax Map 223, Lot 53. Supplemental request for relief from lot shall be one single family dwelling with no more than a two car garage. The grantee will not erect any buildings upon the premises within seven feet of any boundary line. The petitioner previously obtained relief to tear down two existing dwellings at 4 Second Street and construct a new single-family home upon the property containing five bedrooms, but this supplemental request for additional relief is needed based on subsequent plan revision showing a three-car garage that lies within the seven-foot setback. Anybody from the public wishing to be heard on this? Attorney. Peter Sari from the Casazer office. Uh, this is familiar to all of you. It's a project that's been going on now for it seems like months. Uh, we think we're at the end now with all the requirements. Uh, it's complicated because of the fact this was originally um, one big lot. But we have improved the setbacks we improved the sealed surface in fact when we, then we made the the, uh, the surface conforming uh, in the past that apparently it is non-conforming as far as the requirement of the 60 percent setback percentage it's essentially what you've seen before with these two added items in uh, there's nothing unusual about the plan what you see is what you've seen before uh, it's a betterment of the community we're getting rid of two rather cramped poor looking buildings replacing one nice looking building better setbacks uh, and certainly a better project all along uh, the setbacks <coughs> were required were about a foot off on you sit on the front and back uh, because of the requirements for the garage. Uh, 
this isn't something they look to have happen, but it has happened, and they're asking for the board's approval for it. And to, so, Peter, the changes from when we, we've been through this one before. We and, have. Yep. Uh, at, as, uh, as per our, yours and my discussions, I have not recorded the relief the, plan, the board granted before so that we could comprehensively deal with it in one document. The changes for this time around being the fact that now we're going to a three-car garage, and mm -hmm. by virtue of that, it, it allows more parking off street. But as a result of expanding the garage, we get a little within seven feet of the setback on one side. Is that right? That's exactly the reason we're yeah. So okay, that's the explanation. Okay. Anybody else from the public first? Seeing none, Mary Louise. Yeah, we did get a map with this. Peter, is this? I know. <laughs> I had to go out my back. Is this the lot closest to Ocean Boulevard? No. Which one is it? This one, the middle one? It's on King's Highway. It's on King's Highway. This is not the property. This here is the property right here. Okay, so, but which of these two are we referring to? They're two two separate structures. Those are the two structures that we've taken down. Oh, they, oh okay, they've been taken down. The sheet, next sheet behind. Next sheet behind. You're just making us work hard. Okay, I see what you mean right here. Okay, so it says existing dwelling on this one. So this is proposed through, so that one is the one that faces King's Highway. Right. Okay, thank you. Sometimes these maps are. Regina? Nothing, this plan seems like it will alleviate on-street parking issues, which we already have there. So I don't have any questions. Rusty? No, I think it's a, a very good compromise. Did you have any? We're set. We had we had set and talked with all the principals extensively on this. Okay. And the proposal was brought forward from that discussion. Hmm. All set. All set. So this is a first hearing. First hearing. Yes. We will have a second hearing, then we will have two weeks. Yes, sir. Third hearing, and then we will vote. Okay. I understand. So seeing nobody else uh, wishing to speak, we'll close this uh, public hearing at 19:46, and we'll open up the third public hearing at 1946 uh, 741 Ocean Boulevard on the agenda it says 941 that's a typo it's 741 Ocean Boulevard oh, tax okay. map 223 lot 53 slash 1 relief from deed restriction number 4 the only structures permitted to be erected or placed upon said lot shall be one single family dwelling containing no more than four bedrooms with no more than a two-car garage, shall the premise be subdivided, or nor shall the premise be subdivided. This request relates to a previously approved two-lot subdivision that was already resulted in the construction of a new dwelling structure on lot 53-1 having three bedrooms, and is anticipated to result in the construction of a new dwelling structure on lot 53 as noted above that will have five bedrooms. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, uh, this it's nice that these two are being heard side by each because they were once both part of one larger lot and were subject to the same exact deed restrictions. But when there was a division by the planning board, uh, there was not taken into account the full scope of the deed restriction violations that would result. And so this is essentially, uh, by virtue of what's being asked of the board, will clear up problems for both. Uh, this, the, as far as this second, this uh, other public hearing goes, I'm sorry to... No, no, but by I'll means, just keep going unless means. you want to interrupt. Uh, there's nothing new being done with this particular parcel. However, because of the totality of the two, relief is needed from the restriction that there would, the original restriction when they were one, that there'd be only one single family dwelling because there will end up being two, uh, that there would be no more than four bedrooms because there will end up being eight, five for attorney Sari's client and three for attorney Ramsey's client. Um, no more than a two-car garage. There will end up being uh, four cars in a garage, three on attorney Sari's clients, 
one in Attorney Ramsey's client. And then there was that prohibition against no, nor shall the premises be subdivided. Well, of course, they were subdivided. Uh, so we're correcting all of those for both lots. Did I miss something? No, I, I think that's that's exactly it. I mean, for my client's purpose, and again, for the record, Gregory we'll Ramsey. Go the, we'll go to the public now. Okay. Go ahead. Want to identify yourself? For the record, Greg Ramsey uh, for uh, round, two, uh, round uh, eight holdings, the owner of the property at 741. Uh, the only thing I was going to add uh, to, to kind of town, town council's statement was that it's just to clear up title uh, re records and uh, or title defects that potentially you know uh, perpetuate throughout time. Uh, if the property ever financed or resold, uh, this title type of title defect could come up and prevent that or at least delay it. Um, and since uh, Attorney Sari's client is already in the process of doing this, uh, town council actually uh, uh, recommended that we do this at the time to clear up all issues uh, uh, so that this didn't happen in the future. Okay. Any questions for the board? Yes. First one, and I think I've got this. We do have a map here, too. This is the larger, the right-hand parcel, because it shows Ocean Boulevard on the right, all the way over to the right. And then it shows tax map lot 53-1 right there. Correct. Okay. What about the pervious surface? Uh, there's no uh, construction being done on my client's property. Uh, the property has already been constructed several years back. This is only to clear up a title issue. Okay, so this, so the the building ha already exists. It already exists, and there's no modifications or, or plans to to change that. Okay, what's you, what do you think, Mark? I think it's a good idea. You think it's acceptable? Okay, Regina. This is just granting me lease for what already exists. Correct. A lot of stuff. That's okay. all I have. Rusty? Yeah, this building was built, I think, in 86, 87, around that area, and the, and the, uh, the town fathers back at the time, that time separated the lots, uh -huh. and they just didn't continue, what, they didn't do everything they should have done back then, so all this is doing is clearing up that on a lot that the house is already built, and uh, they're not planning on any correct building to it, so thank you. That's it. Nothing else from you? Nothing else from me. Okay, anybody else in the public wishing to hear speak on this? Seeing none, this again is the first hearing, so we will have a second and a third hearing, and we'll vote at that time. So we'll close this public hearing at 1951. Thank you for attending. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. All right. We'll be back. We're now down to public comment. Anybody from the public wishing to make any comments? If there are, please come up to the podium. Seeing none. We will move on to announcements and community calendar. Mary Louise? No, uh, nothing, thank you. Regina? Just uh, presidential primary tomorrow. Make sure you go to Wanna Cun It and vote. Mm -hmm. Like the chief says, if you get there early or any time between 2.30, look for the uh, Hampton police officers or whoever's going to be yeah. directing traffic to make sure that you can uh, get a spot. Yeah. And please be patient. Thank That's you. good. Rusty? Nope. Okay, I just have, again, uh, reiterating what Regina said, vote tomorrow and please pay attention to where you have to park and getting yep. in there and the traffic and everything, and it should go very smoothly. Okay. okay, approval of minutes. I will so move the minutes of January 27, 2020, Mr. Chairman. I'll second that. Moved and a second. All in favor? Unanimous. Consent agenda. 2020 veterans credits new. 2020 Veterans Credits and Renewals, Cemetery Deed, Conservation Appointment, Deborah Warble to full member, Poll Petition License, AT&T, 139 Ocean Boulevard and 145 Ocean Boulevard. I'll move the consent agenda. Second. All in favor? Unanimous. Appointments, Chief Ayotte, Fire Department, Departmental Update. Busy man tonight. Yes, sir. <laughs> Thank you very much for allowing us to do that. That's a very important part of the process to make sure that everybody's recognized for a job well done, and we appreciate your your um, input on that. Uh, this evening, Deputy Cutting is going to be partaking in some of the festivities over there, as he and Captain Weiser were on shift for longer than most married couples. Uh, oh. <laughs> so they were together for a very long time. So I said, why don't you go over there tonight? So, uh, Mr. Waddell and board members, thank you very much. 
Um, I appreciate the opportunity to speak with you. As evidenced by the ceremonies that took place this evening, you can see that Hampton Fire Rescue is experiencing a great deal of change. Numerous personnel changes have occurred, with a few more anticipated in the next few weeks. On January 17th, Captain John Stevens retired at the end of a 32-year career in the fire service. Captain Stevens was hired in 1987, which means he had already worked as a firefighter for the town of Hampton for eight years before our newest hire was born. <laughs> he was a reliable leader and his influence will be felt for years to come. We wish him well in his future endeavors. Brian Weiser, a 29-year member of the department, was promoted to captain and has been assigned to shift as shift commander on Group 3. Captain Weiser has been instrumental in the development of the Marine program where he works to develop policies, purchase equipment, coordinate training, and ensure fleet maintenance and readiness. Nathan Denio was promoted to lieutenant and was assigned to Group 2. Lieutenant Denio has returned to fire suppression after serving the department, uh, as, serving the department as the EMS officer for the last four and a half years. He's done a tremendous job in raising the level of service and we're able to provide as EMS professionals. Catherine Meehan has been promoted to the Emergency Medical Services Officer position. Kate began her career as a fire alarm operator in Hampton in 2005, became a firefighter in 2009, and graduated paramedic school in 2018. We welcome her to this new position. Our newest probationary firefighter, Joseph Isabel, began on January 27th. He has been uh, an advanced emergency medical technician for the last six years and is slated to graduate paramedic school in early March. Firefighter Isabel comes to us from Pease Fire Department, where he worked full-time, while also working as a call and per diem firefighter in Newington and Rawlinsford, and we welcome him aboard. As this is the uh, first quarterly, and I haven't seen you since 2019, I'll give you a year overview if that's all right with you, sir. Mm -hmm. In 2019, we fielded 4,580 calls for service. The breakdown is 2,168 fire calls and 2,412 patient contacts. This is an increase of over 254 calls over last year, or a 6% increase in call volume over the previous year. On the fire side, in 2019, we responded to 16 structure fires in the town of Hampton, along with numerous other small fires in outbuildings and several mutual aid responses for structure fires in other communities. In January 2019, crews responded to two four-alarm fires as part of mutual aid response to both Salisbury and Newburyport uh, for fires in their communities. In February, crews worked aggressively to extinguish a three-alarm fire which resulted in the tragic loss of a seven-year-old boy. And our deepest condolences continue to go out to the families involved. Several fires occurred in the spring and early summer. July saw two larger fires, one uh, including one at the Royal Crest Motor Inn and another on Dover Ave. The Dover Ave fire occurred during a typical summer day with multiple calls being fielded simultaneously. While the alarm of fire sounded, crews were completing the, an EMS run and also handling a marine response to Rye. We were assisted by several off-duty and vacationing firefighters that happened to be staying at the beach for the week. One truth that I can find in this is that firefighters are always firefighters, even when on vacation. <laughs> in August, we saw two fires, which are remarkable for a different reason. One at a home located at 382 Exeter Road, and one in a commercial structure at 1 Laf Lafayette Road. Uh, they required a modified response. Both of these structures occurred in parts of the community that are outside of the hydrant districts. So mutual aid was required, and we needed tanker trucks for water supply. We responded to numerous cooking fires, outside fires, mulch fires, several trash fires, and six vehicle fires in the course of the year. We responded to six water rescues, 47 motor vehicle accidents with injuries, and several carbon monoxide investigations in 2019. Hampton Fire Rescue provided mutual aid for a total of, fi um, fire, or a total of 20 fire calls last year. We received mutual aid 61 times in 2019. We are requiring mutual aid three times more than we are providing it. We have now switched to Alpine uh, Software's Red NMX pro program. As you may recall, this conversion was part of a warrant article that also included the town website upgrades. Um, the software is integral in our computer-aided dispatch, personnel attendance records, site files for addresses, call log, and permitting. Several modules are being used to centrally locate vehicle maintenance, SCBA maintenance, uh, radio and tool inventories. We're looking forward to the increased capabilities of the system the system is infinitely more user-friendly and geared towards generating better reports from the data. There will be a change in the way I, um, I report in the offer that I give to you in reports um, and how I report to the board, and I want to make you aware of this in advance. The method used to record a call will be different than the method we used previously, and this will result in a counting change. Hmm. The call volume will look different when compared to historical data, but the workload will not have been reduced. I will have more on this in the future to help you better understand the changes, but I wanted to make you aware of it um, in, in any anticipated differences for the future reports. 
For this reason, I cannot give you an accurate year-over-year -year comparison for the months of January between 2020 and 2019. However, I can say, thankfully, that there were no structure fires that occurred in January of 2020 in Hampton. Emergency Medical Services, Hampton Fire Rescue had 2,412 patient contacts in 2019. We transported 1,573 patients to various hospitals. We transported to the Exeter Hospital 739 times, Portsmouth Regional 460 times, Seabrook ER 350 times, and the Anna Jakes Hospital 23 times, once also going to the Wentworth Douglas Hospital. Unlike fire reporting, the EMS reporting has remained the same, and I can report that we had 176 patient contacts for January of 2020, which represents an increase of 9% over the call volume of last year. There were 54 calls for overdose in 2019, with 48 doses of Narcan administered. We responded to six STEMIs, which are um, heart attacks, um, 27 patients having stroke, 36 chest pain calls, 24 cardiac arrests, and 414 trauma calls. The leading cause of trauma in this town and most others is falls. I would like to take a moment to thank Nate Denio for his service as Emergency Medical Services Officer. He started in that role on May 1st, 2015, and began working to develop the education program, increase CPR instruction, and spearheaded the Stop the Bleed program. We work closely with our billing agency, Mr. Welch, and this board to rectify some long-standing problems that were having a negative impact on the EMS account. With these resolutions, we've been able to purchase ambulances on a program basis, invest in new technology, including state-of-the-art cardiac monitors and IV pumps. We added automated CPR devices to make treating patients suffering cardiac arrest more effective and also safer for our providers. Along with the added lift systems in the ambulances, which has had a profound effect uh, on the number of back and shoulder injuries and that have occurred from lifting patients into and out of the ambulance. Nate was also instrumental in obtaining grants for the rescue task force equipment and training, as well as um, the latest one for assisting families of patients who suffer from overdose. So thank you very much, Nate. We anticipate sending two firefighters to paramedic school in, at the New England EMS Institute beginning in April. The anticipated graduation date will be in the late summer of 2021. We have established an ambulance committee and they have already started working on developing the plans as well as contacting the vendors to prepare for a replacement of A2, which is seven years old and beyond the anticipated six year program replacement. Following the plans and the requests for proposals, a new ambulance will be ordered. Some vendors are up to 200 days to build. Wow. In fire prevention, the Fire Prevention Bureau performed 353 inspections last year, issued 195 permits, and collected $7,693.95 in fees in 2019. There were 15 display fireworks, inspections, and 11 fire investigations. As the summer season approaches, so too does the impending inspection season. These inspections of fire safety, life safety, and commercial hoods. These are routine, but they must be scheduled in advance, and as construction projects in this town also require numerous inspections, so I'd like to give a PSA and say, please be sure to call ahead and make these arrangements. The Fire Prevention Bureau delivered a message of fire safety in the home to 782 students in October of last year. In communications, our fire alarm operators answered 22,091 phone calls last year. As I stated before, several of these were for fires, which, mean, which means that they must also then dispatch and coordinate radio traffic. We've been notified that we've been awarded a uh, Department of Safety 2019 Homeland Security Grant for the purpose of reprogramming all radios to maintain interoperability with our surrounding communities. This grant is a reimbursement grant that will cover the one-time code plug-in revision. Hmm. I applied for this grant in June of 2019. We were made aware of the award at the beginning of 2020. Hmm. We had to perform some online education classes before we were able to accept this grant, and I can report that this is completed. We must now have our communications company deliver a quote for reprogramming all of the radios so that I can identify the cost and true award amount. I respectfully request the board consider acceptance of this grant. Once the final award amount is determined, I will forward it to the board as uh, to close the loop. For administration, Deputy Cutting is working on completing the implementation of the Red NMX software. He is also reviewing our standard operating procedures and we are updating them as needed. I'm working on the Assistance to Firefighters Grant, or AFG Grant, for the purpose of replacing our obsolete portable radios. These are 20 plus years old and they are becoming too costly to repair at approximately $525 per device for, per repair. I'll keep you informed through the process. A great deal of change has occurred in the department. More is on the way. With the retirement of Captain Stevens, promotions of Captain Weiser, Lieutenant Denio, EMS Officer Meehan, and the pending retirement of Captain David Matson at the end of the month, we will have two more promotions and two more firefighter positions we are working to fill. So, fair warning, 
I will ask the board's indulgence in allowing the future promotions and new hires to be recognized on their appointments. Thank you very much for your consideration, and I'd be happy to answer any questions. Mary Louise? Yes. Your reports are always outstanding, and I very much appreciate the clarity that you have. Uh, Thank would you, you kindly forward yes, an email to the chairman of the budget committee as soon as you can so they have your whole report? Yes, ma'am. So I think it's, done. it's very important. Oh, good. Okay. Thank you so much. Well, you think ahead, Fred. You think ahead. But excellent job. And I'm concerned about you being able to find two new firefighters for the uh, for the department. It's not easy these days. It's not. Uh, Joe's a very good candidate, and uh, he seems to be getting along very well. And now we have another process, and we'll see where it brings us. Oh, okay. Because we don't want you shorthanded. No, ma'am. Thank you, though, very much. Thank you. Excellent job, Chief, and yep. excellent report. Thank you, ma'am. And on the all the uh, promotions and the new hire, very good. Um, just one question I have. There was 54 calls for overdose. How does that compare to last year? Uh, about equal. Um, you know, there was a trending down slope where we weren't seeing as many. Uh, and in, our, in my last report to you, I, I think you'll remember that I said that that kind of got erased. So unfortunately, it's, it's right where we would have expected it to be. Right. Um, there were 48 administrations of Narcan. One thing that I can't tell you because I don't know is whether or not it was the, uh, the same person receiving a couple of doses. When we report overdoses, you might imagine that there, there's a plethora of medicines out there and, and drugs, and they may take an opiate, they may take something else, over-the-counter or whatever it might be. So Narcan might not be the, the resolution to whatever problem they're having. Um, however, it's still we're still seeing it in this community. Yeah, I just found out a 30-year-old uh, former high school student of my boyfriend was over overdosed on Friday up in uh, Deerfield, New Hampshire. So I think we still have quite a problem around here. Yeah, we do. Rusty? No, good report, Chief. Uh, Thanks, sir. The uh, dispatch and all the, the changes that are going on in there with all your new stuff, how's that working out? It's working out very well. Uh, like I said, this, this particular software is very user-friendly. Um, it took a lot of time, and I, I'd love to recognize Deputy Cutting and um, Cassie, um, Cassie Levitt. Almost got, almost got me there, right? Uh, for her um, working behind the scenes on making the, the databases work. Um, we've had a couple of firefighters on light duty recently, and they've been doing a lot of administration. Um, the captains who are in charge of the, the small tools and the SCBA, they've been working on upgrading their part of it, vehicle maintenance. Um, it takes a little bit of learning to get involved with that and then to actually put the data in the right spot in the database. It took a little bit of doing. So there was some online sessions with the, the company. There was some training that went on there. Uh, but right now, as far as user friendly, it's it's doing a very good job. Uh, no complaints so far. All right. So we're not we're not having any issues with just because it's different and, and uh, they're out there. So. No, not right now. Um, it's still we're still doing similar reports to the enters that you might even recognize. There, there's been very little changes to that form in a long time. Um, this has given us a much more centrally located one area that we're going to be using for all of the data and we can use vehicle maintenance, we can do personnel staffing. Uh, it also gives us an opportunity to get reports out of the data, which IMC, which is our former um, program, didn't allow us to do. So it wasn't friendly at all. And, and so do we, do, we, uh, do we anticipate any additional training for the upgrades and stuff? There's, there's still some time left that I think that they owe us for training, but I think that uh, Deputy Cutting has brought him in uh, systematically. He did fire prevention, he did the captains, he did uh, in lieutenants. So each each niche has had specific training so that they were able to do what they needed to to make the program work for them. Um, and then it, what's nice about this is it's also not going to be an Excel spreadsheet on the S drive where somebody started it and then another guy, if they take that pot over, they have to learn how to do that. Yeah. This is one system that's it's easily usable. So once they get used to using it, it'll be much seamless. Yeah, absolutely right. Good word. All right. Thank you. Okay. I have nothing. Very good. Uh, Thanks, sir. Report. Thank you. Chairman. I would suggest that the board vote to accept the Homeland Security grant for the reprogramming of the radio. So moved. Okay. I'll second. Okay, moved by Rusty, seconded by Mary Louise. All in favor? Unanimous. Wonderful, thank you. And I will let you know once we get the cost on that what it right. will end up being, so you'll know. Okay. Excellent. Thank, thank you, you so much. much. Have a great thank night. You. And thank you again for your indulgence. No problem. We love it. Next, Christy Pulliam, Finance, End of Year Encumbrances and Financials, and then Warren Articles. Good evening. Mm -hmm. 
All right, so I was here a couple weeks ago now and went through the end of year revenue and expense report. So I'll just do that quickly. Nothing, not much has changed um, since I was here. <coughs> revenue uh, will end the year. Uh, total income for the month was $1,509,170. Of that total, motor vehicles came in at $370,690. Mm. Building permits at $30,000. And eighty-two dollars rooms and meals at seven hundred seventy-two thousand eight hundred and thirty-two dollars departmental income at one hundred ninety-two thousand seven hundred eighty-two rice sewer agreement at seventeen thousand eight hundred ninety-eight interest on deposits at eighteen thousand seven hundred thirty-five and the real estate trust at fifty-six thousand four hundred the two thousand and nineteen revenue is higher than the 2018 revenue by $515,258. On the expense side, I won't go through each of the sections because like I said, not, not much has really changed there, but on the expense side, we're 97.9% spent or under budget by $528,201 or 1.9%. So um, a lot of times people see 528 and think that 528,000 and think that's a big number, but on a $28 million budget, 528 is a comfortable number, I think is a good way to describe that. Um, there were some, a few other bills that had come in, but like I said, nothing majorly different there. And in fact, a couple 2019 bills came across my desk. So this is <laughs> what will be going in the annual report for financials, but I do always like to reiterate at the end of the year that if these are still unaudited and um, I probably have at least almost six thousand dollars worth of bill or a bill for like five thousand and a couple small bills sitting on my desk that I will move back to 2019 because we put all of our expenses in the proper time frame. Um, I'll read the balances in the special revenue funds real quick. Uh, the recreation fund has a balance of two hundred thirty five thousand three hundred fifty nine dollars. Cable has two hundred fifty six thousand six hundred twenty one. The private detail fund has 276,769, and the EMS um, balance is $291,835. Wastewater system development charges in 2019, we collect $74,886. The balance in that account is $257,257. $257. And that kind of wraps up the revenue and expenses like I said that um, Christina is chomping at the bit waiting for her annual report number so that will be going in over to her tomorrow for the annual report do you want to do questions on that real quick or yeah, we'll good with those? okay Mary Louise no thank you Regina Christy thanks for the report yeah like you said 1.9 percent on a what, 28 million dollar yeah. budget yeah that's very accurate thank yes. you very much thank you Rusty excellent job as always excellent Okay, nice. All right, and then the other thing I had given to you guys last, well, two weeks ago now, and it has, um, and I resent it out, I believe, with the financials last week, were in regards to purchase orders and encumbrance, purchase orders which are encumbrances and warrant articles that we wish to carry forward and ones that will be lapsing, either because the projects are complete, the warrant article has expired. Um, or in the sake of the conservation, there was that 110,000 that the land sale fell through on. So that money will be lapsing back um, to the unassigned fund balance. So on the purchase order side, a, the only thing that Fred and I were questioning, there was a $10,000 uh, purchase order for waste zero that was included in your original numbers. We don't know if you guys are still wishing to keep it included or if we were going to let that lapse at the end of the year since we didn't really get that project up and running and we can reissue again this year if that's the way the board wants to go. We weren't sure where we were with that one. So that was one of the questions we had. Okay, Fred, we're gonna leave that. You can speak to that. I can, Mr. Chairman. And uh, Jamie and I have both talked about it. And, uh, obviously our finance directors talked to both of us about it and we all agree it should be lapsed. Okay. And we'll just write a new purchase order because we have not signed a contract as of yet for last year. Oh. Do you need a motion and a vote? It'll be part of your overall vote as far as the okay. procedures concerned. If you guys wish to take that off, I have recalculated numbers. And then right. if we want to talk about anything else, I don't know if there was any other things. I can run through this real quick. Um, yeah, I'd like to make a comment on the okay. zero thing. 
Yeah, I think that that's probably a good idea because Waste Zero, I think part of that contract deal was that we would be looking to do a pay as you throw mm -hmm. system. It has all different versions of pay as you throw, but yes. Yeah, it well, was. I for one am not comfortable with putting that forward, so mm -hmm. I think that we let it lapse is a good idea. So if, do you want me to run through the numbers real quick just for you guys so you know everyone at home can hear? I yeah, can do it I'm fast. Yeah, I know you guys are. Yep. Okay, so um, at the end of 2019, there this takes the waste zero off since we kind of were predicting that may happen. So um, there was a total of 1,279,975 dollars worth of purchase orders or encumbrances on the books. However, only $850,988 is related to the general fund because there's a lot of large purchase orders in other funds such yeah. as the wastewater treatment phase one, the 116000 that was from um, state um, aid that came through. So that's where that number comes from. The warrant articles, I had listed them all out for you. I will not read them, but they were listed and they will, will be posted with my financial. So if anybody does want to see, totals, um, one million one hundred and sixty-five thousand two hundred and fifty-four dollars. So those are warrant articles that Fred, Jamie, and I have all reviewed. We've also reached out to all the departments that the projects are related to to confirm that yes, these are still ongoing. No, they haven't lapsed um, because the warrant articles haven't expired, mm -hmm. and we do wish to bring them forward in to two thousand and twenty. And then there was a total of. $74,745 worth of warrant articles that have either expired or the projects are completed or whatever reasons that money can be returned um, to the unassigned fund balance. And I listed out all of those warrant articles on the sheet as well. So that's kind of a real quick summary of what we would like to bring forward and we do need the board to vote on that because when the auditors come they have to see that you know we've discussed it all with you you've seen i also provided you guys with the whole purchase order list so you could see all of the purchase orders too so if you guys have any questions i can answer those or questions questions just yeah i just want to say what you said verified all the purchase orders here and then there's a few that expire as of march 31st 2020 so whatever is not open purchase order will get yeah or if there's a contract because if there's a contract for that project as long as there's a contract in place yeah well most of them looks like they're mostly going to get used up for the open yes purchase order. that is the case i just wanted to make sure that make yeah. that clarification because it, it's either a contract or a purchase order so as long as either one is there then they will not lapse on march 31st those few there's a few of them though thank you well, so, thank you i got nothing okay so we have a motion i'll make a motion second all in favor unanimous okay. great and i will um now that you guys have passed that i will add that to i didn't have that up with my financials because the board had not voted on it but i will that two-page summary list i will put that up with my financials so if anyone uh does want to see it they can have it available okay. to them Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. You're Christy. welcome. Have a good night. Night. You Next, we have Ed Tinker, contract assessor, and I believe Mark, are you joining him? Uh, not yet. Not yet. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so Ed, you're on your own. Yep. All right. Good evening. <laughs> Least land commitment. Yes. First is the commitment list um, for 2020. Um, as you will see, um, there's 31 lease parcels left mm -hmm. remaining. Um, and the last one with that will now is expiring and will now have uh, the 2% lease fee applied to that beginning this year, April 1, due April 1. So the total for the 2020 um, land rent uh, fee is $193,778. Answer any questions? Or? Mary Louise? Yeah. No. Regina? I'm good, thank you. Rusty? All set, thanks. And just quickly, because some people that, that aren't ham that haven't been in Hampton for a long time might not realize what we're talking about. Right. Exactly what are you talking about? Leased land. Uh, the, the town um, owns land parcels. I guess back in the day they owned 600 and something parcels were, mm -hmm. were leased, more than that. Um, there's 31 of them remaining. That's what's left out of that total amount. 31. Which I think was I don't right. Know how many and, were and back we, in people the day. pay 
they, wrecked they, on that. Right. They, 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 they're, they're taxed just like uh, the, the, any other parcel. So they, they pay the taxes, uh, but they also pay a 2% land rent fee. Um, and that began, I believe, in 96, Mark? 98? 96. Uh, 96. So the old leases that were signed before that, there were several of those, but now, like I said, this last one that's renewing this year, that's the last one of the old leases. So all 31 now will be required to pay that 2%. Right. And our real estate trust fund is where it came from the ones we've sold, right? I believe yes. that money goes into the to the real, real estate, estate trust fund. Yeah. Has all yeah. town land that's sold goes to the proceeds go into the real estate trust fund. Yeah. Which has right. set the town up very nicely. Very nicely. <laughs> right. So, okay. Do you need a vote on that or anything? Um, I believe so. Um, just to let you know, the, the last page of the actual list is where the signature should be, not on the cover page. Um, it shows up on both, but if you could sign the actual okay. commitment list, that would be great. Do I have a motion? So moved. A second. All in favor? Unanimous? Okay. Um, great. And then you have uh, assignment of lease. 14 O Street? I have, a, I have an assignment of lease. That's 14 O Street, which recently uh, the building had sold. I, I believe it was um, uh, bank owned it for the bank, took it and sold it recently. Yeah. So now the land yes. must be put into the uh, new owner's name. Okay. Yeah, the, 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 that was a property where uh, over several years' time the former lessee uh, was not paying the land rent, uh, which caused no end of trouble on our end uh, because under the terms of the leases, the standard leases, if someone isn't paying the land rent, the town can take a number of steps, including uh, evicting oh. evicting the, the building, <laughs> essentially. Mm. So it, it gets a little bit difficult. In each case, eventually the bank stepped in <laughs> And realizing the value is in the land as much as the building, this being a smaller building, the, the bank uh, had holding the mortgage paid the land rent. And therefore, eventually, they, after a couple of fits and starts, foreclosed on the, their, their mortgage, mortgagor. And, uh, and under the terms of the lease, when the bank forecloses, you do not have to go through a separate assignment uh, of the lease that it's approved by this board for the person that buys at the foreclosure. In this case, it was the bank itself that bought at the foreclosure. But now we have the bank selling the property to a third party uh, who very nicely, their names are uh, uh, Bobby and Stephen Seuss. And so they now, uh, would need to have this board approve the assignment of the lease essentially from the bank to them. And so that's the background. Okay. To make that motion. To a motion. motion. To I'll a second. second it. Any discussion? No. No? Okay. okay. All right. All in favor? And unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. And now we have uh, 2019 abatements? No, we have three land leases that, again, we spoke of earlier, there's three leases that had to be re have to be renewed for April 1 of this year. So you have three of those uh, okay. to, to sign. 7 and 9 A Street, 7 and 9 A Street 24 K Street, 22 and Epping. 22 Epping. Yep. Yeah, same thing. I'll make a motion, motion. to sign these three. You got a second? All in favor? Okay. Abatements. Abatements. Now abatements. Um, you have uh, a list of... 12 abatements also and additionally there's a tax collector abatement list with right. a separate uh, signature page those are ones that to clean up for bookkeeping purposes to clean up um, properties that may have been taxable the first half of the year but we had to leave them on the books they became non-taxable a uh, few trailers and just some odds and ends that need to be cleaned up as part of the assessing process um, Additionally, there's the 12 abatements, 11 recommended for refund, one recommended for denial. The refund amount for the 11 would be $3,420. I can answer any questions if you have any. Any questions? Regina? 
I have questions on the abatements for bookkeeping purposes. Okay. Have we gotten to that yet? No, right? Yeah, we can do that. All right. No, I have no questions on. Just uh, for clarification, so we have $12,592 for abatements. Now, two of those properties, one's for 9000 and the other one's for 1300 those are no longer taxable properties? Well, the, the, um, the rail bed is no longer taxable. It was taxable for the first half of the year. So we did collect taxes for the first half of 19. They sold the property to the state uh, prior to the July, early July, I believe it was sold, transferred to the state. So of course the state doesn't, so we weren't able to collect taxes on the second half, but we had to leave the parcel the right. way it was in the system. And then just to clean up the books, we'd need to uh, abate that so the, so the tax collector can clean the books up on that. The other property is a cell tower that was located at 81 Ocean Boulevard, but during the tax year it moved to 83 Ocean Boulevard. So they did get taxed. Um, one parcel, they, they got taxed the first half on one. We had to leave it on that one for the year. Again, similar. We couldn't change it. We couldn't zero it out through the half year. And that has to do with the, the tax collector's books. All right. Um, but they were taxed the whole year, but they were taxed on the other parcel. So one had to be cleaned up. The second half bill on one of them had to be. Yeah, I just pointed up. it out because out of the 12,592, that, that was the right. majority of those. Uh, yeah, typically, typically they're, they're not that much in value because we clean up like right. something that may become exempt during the tax year. But these two, yeah, they were, they were bigger properties. But again, the cell tower. There was no, uh, they were taxed all year. Okay, thank you. Yes, oh, the only question I have well, on the same thing, just looking at these, a number of them are campers. Now, yeah. if camp is registered, then you can't tax it as a. Well, there's no there's no defined rule to that. But how can you double tax somebody if they're paying tax to register it versus. Well, that's the reason behind these. Okay. So if they, if a, if a, Motor, a home is brought into town or onto the site for the first year and it's registered. Um, they wouldn't be taxed for the year, that year they were there. What we look for though, even though it's registered, if it stays on site, meaning it's put on a site, it's not drivable, it's been, you know, uh, set on that site and it stays through the winter and to the next taxable season for the camera, we would consider it to be taxable at that point. Even if it was registered? Yes, there's no clear law or rule as to if they're taxable or not once they remain on site fixed to the ground just like real estate at this point. So if it stays stationary for that amount of time, it should be taxed. Okay. Or at least there's no yes or no that's in writing. It's it's okay. as long as as long as the vehicle is not mobile. It can't be made mobile and can't be you can't just back up to it, hook onto it and move it. Oh. A lot of these people take the take the uh, tires off, right. set them up on blocks. That when that when that occurs, they become a non-mobile situation. So, and some of them continue to register them just so that they can eventually move them if they wish. Right. Yeah. So if they're registered, then they, I mean, it's not hard to move them. <laughs> no, it's not hard to move them. But if they make them immovable, uh, then they're taxed on. Them. Okay. Yeah, I think it's the, the the fact that they stay on that site for that amount of time. Okay. They're implied that they're not moving them would be considered taxable at that point. Okay. That's just a question okay. I had. What do you, uh, yep. Okay. What do we need for a motion? What do you need? Motion? Yes. Please. Motion. Our motion to accept the 2019 abatements. Please. Second. Okay, motion by Regina, second by Rusty. All in favor? Unanimous. Do you have anything else for us? That's it for now. That's good. All right. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> nice seeing you. <laughs> uh, next is Derek Sitz, Windover Construction, and Joe Carnati, <laughs> Jones and Beach, 
I Street closure for 3320 through 36 2020 and 406 2020 through 410 2020. It's a good start. <laughs> to identify yourself and we can start. I'm Derek Seitz from Windover Construction. Chuck Bellmore, uh, the owner of the property. Joe Coronati, Jones Beach Engineer. Okay. Uh, the pass out that I just uh, gave to everybody um, with all the pretty pictures is <laughs> essentially uh, the description and diagram of what we're proposing to do on I Street to close the street during steel erection and modular setting for the project. Um, I provided some dates at the bottom, which is going to be pretty close, barring, you know, 10 feet of snow. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, what I have in front of me and all the information I have, that those those are my best guesses for the dates that I'll need to close the road. Um, and essentially, we'll set up the crane at the end of I Street, right at the corner of I Street and Ocean Boulevard, and uh, close the road down. And we'll make I Street two-way for those short durations. And it's essentially a week for steel and a week for modular. And that's it. Anything else? Any questions? I'm not very good with maps. You've got Ocean Boulevard here on the right. And what is? That's Ashworth. That's Ashworth? Correct, yeah. yes. Oh, OK. I'm sorry. And what's the length of time and, and the date or when? Um, so there? I'm guessing right now it's looking about the beginning of March for a week, beginning of March, for steel. And first or second week of April for the modular set. And again, just a week. Huh, that's a lot of work. Yeah. Regina? Do you have anything else? No, no. Regina? No, so when you close I Street, as far as the if there's any people on there, what is going to be people that live there? Is that going to? Yep, there are there are residents there, um, but we'll be able to they'll be able to travel out of I Street onto Ashworth. Right. Okay, so you guys will handle all that. Yes, sure that's enough. correct. All right, perfect. For a minute, I thought you were saying High Street. Rusty. High Street. No, I think this is a great plan. I know uh, we had a similar one to this when uh, when uh, Chuck Rage built his building. It was the same type of construction. I think of that. To, to limit the time it takes to do it, I think it's a great way to do it. Uh, I, obviously, you, you, you've planned this all out, and I, and I get no plan with it, problem with it. Okay. Uh, and, and you've worked out with the res the other residents on the street how they can get in and out and stuff. That'll all be... Correct. They, 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 they know about the project. They're very aware. As it gets closer, we'll probably, you know, knock on doors just to make sure they're, uh -huh. you know, very, very aware that it's going to happen, but uh, we'll have plenty of signage. Um, it'll be as clear as possible. Super. Do you have any? Yeah. Are you going to make I Street two-way at one point? Correct. Then they'll need to vote to allow that because it's currently a one-way street. I'll make a motion that we, during the construction, we allow him to make I Street a two-way street so that he can. I'll second it. All in favor? 
and, and while we while they are here, yeah, I'll make a motion that we allow them at the recommendation of the police chief to use the island path lot to store yes. the trailers in. Uh, yeah. Second. I'll second. Oh. All in favor? Yes. Anything else you need? Yes, we have one other item, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Um, the second part on the agenda is a uh, is a little bit of restriping on High Street, which would be a permanent restriping. Um, so I handed out a, a kind of a crude, just highlighted plan uh, with uh, Chuck uh, Balmore's proposal. He's looking to build 21 bedroom apartments along Ocean Boulevard and then have the parking on two lots that he owns on High Street. Uh, with the reconfiguration of the curb cuts uh, onto I Street, they uh, are located in such a way that we would want to move the permanent parking striping so that we would not lose any parking on I Street, but we would have, if we left it the way it was, we would have a curb cut through a parking space, which doesn't work. So we're proposing to simply move the, uh, the parking spaces from where I have the orange to the, to the blue on this, on this spot back on I Street and then up by the corner of I and Ocean Boulevard, we would actually move the parking space forward uh, so as to not lose parking and we would just shorten the loading zone that's at the, uh, at the corner if the, if the board uh, approves. Has this been run by DPW? It has, yes. We reviewed it with DPW and they uh, said it looked good and they sent this to you for an official vote. Okay. Manager? DBW approved it, that's fine. Okay. A motion? I'll, ma I'll make a motion. We allow them to restripe that little bit of area to correct the parking spaces. Made by Rusty, seconded by Regina. All in favor? Good. Anything else? I think that's it. Thank good you seeing you. Thank you. Yeah, thank good you for evening. Have a good spring. Appreciate hopefully, there's no snow there. Yeah, yeah, hope we get it done quick. Um, yeah, yeah. No snow we will be. Yeah. Thank you again. Yep. Thank you. Okay, town manager's report. Okay, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Um, everybody, please remember that tomorrow is the national primary here in the state of New Hampshire. We held at Winnicott High School from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. Now, you heard the police chief talk earlier. Please carpool if you can. Uh, parking will be short during the morning until about 2.30 in the afternoon, and there will be no problem after that. Uh, we do have 180 spaces and then some that may be used by residents who are going up there to vote. So please go, it's very important. Uh, the Department of Environmental Services has issued new wetland rules. If you are planning to do work on your property that may involve wetlands, you should consult with the state DES website to examine the new rules. Very important, they are, they are in effect at this time. No overnight parking ban from 1, 1 a.m. to 7 a.m. is still in effect. During this period, no vehicle should be parked on town roadways. Property owners interested in obtaining exemptions or credits from property taxes should contact the assessor's office to obtain the necessary forms to effectuate that, that release. A request for abatement from property taxes uh, must be filed by March 1, 2020. The forms are available in the assessor's office and if you haven't filed for your absentee ballots as of today, you need to go vote. It's too late <laughs> tomorrow because the town clerk's office is closed all day tomorrow. All their personnel will be at the polls voting and helping people vote. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay, questions for the town manager, Mary Louise. When, we're not going to have any caucuses, Fred? No caucuses. <laughs> the caucus law has been revoked a number of uh, decades ago. <laughs> Regina? Uh, yeah, just one thing on what the town manager said on the NHDES rules. I actually ran them by the town planner because I did, I was trying to interpret them. And uh, his initial impression on them is that the changes in application process may present more administrative challenges and additional fees for both the homeowner and also for the town of Hampton. Wow. So you should definitely look them up because it does, it does apply to decks and sheds. Rusty? While you brought up the voting, on, if people are not registered, they can still register same day tomorrow, correct? They can, sir. So long as they bring a proper ID, ID like yeah. a license or something. That, right. So says you live here. 
Uh, yeah, they live in, yeah. <laughs> so if they live in Hampton and they haven't registered, they can register the same day. That's correct. Thank you. Good. Thank you. Uh, old business. Anybody got any old business? No. Mr. Manager, do you have any? No, sir, I don't. I just have one quick question. Okay. Next time we meet is the 24th or something. Do you know if public work scheduled to come in on that? They yeah, we've got, okay. we've got the holiday. Yeah. I'm good. Thank you. Still some more. Uh, Rusty. No old business. No old business. No business. Accepting acceptance of Miss Neck Miss Nectech LLC conservation easement deed for 343, 363, and 379 Exeter Road map, tax map 51, lot 3. Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman. This is a uh, parcel that's being uh, offered to be made subject to a conservation easement as satisfying one condition of a wetlands permit and a site plan approval by the planning board. Uh, which was for a driveway expansion for truck access around the existing building and to create access to an overhead door at the southwest portion of the building. Uh, because that impacted wetlands, this conservation easement is being offered as a um, mitigation. Uh, it is actually a... Uh, the, uh, uh, there's a map that was provided with the um, conservation co co coordinators um, memo that I provided to the board which actually adds a significant area uh, to an existing conservation easement that was given as part of the cornerstone project and so uh, this area actually includes I believe an area of Old River which was important to the Conservation Commission uh, for uh, conservation purposes and uh, this easement actually uh, as worded and approved by my office um, at the expense of the applicant um, provides for access to the back area over the initial area that was granted first so um, I recommend that the board uh, the statutory uh, scheme is that the Conservation Commission accepts the donation subject to this board's approval and so we're at this approval stage. So the motion would be to uh, approve uh, this conservation easements acquisition. I'll make that motion. We have a second. I have a quick question. Okay, do we have a second first? Second. Okay, second, okay, questions? Do we have any format for going back and inspecting these properties? year two years down the road to see if they're really holding to what they're asking for to make sure there's no junk or other encro encroachment into what they're giving us as you know uh, conservation land yes that's uh, one of the purposes of getting the access over the front parcel to get to the rear was for that inspection purpose Okay. And as I understand, the protocol of the commission is they inspect on an annual basis. Okay. Oftentimes using interns for that purpose. I hope. Okay. Anybody else? Regina? I'm good. Rusty? All set. Okay. Motion and a second. All in favor? Unanimous. Thank you. Passed. Appointment of Chris Jacobs, DPW Director, Jen Hale, DPW Deputy Director to New Hampshire Seacoast Transportation Corridor Vulnerability <laughs> Assessment and Plan STZBA. So moved. I'll second. I just have a comment. All right, comment. The goal of this is to enhance regional coordination in New Hampshire for transportation networks vulnerable to sea level rise and other coastal hazards in order to maximize information sharing, identify opportunities to fill data gaps, and develop shared understanding of options for future transportation planning. Yes. I appreciate the goals, but the public works director and the deputy director are drowning in projects and stuff that they need to do. I'm just concerned about them using, having to use a lot of time on this. Do well, they, they, they do uh, have to spend some time on this, and, and they requested to be appointed. You think it's I, okay. I think it's acceptable because they are going to have to wrestle with the individual problems that come up from this right. particular task force. Okay. I just want to make sure oh, they're no. not being overwhelmed. We thought the same thing. It's all going to follow yeah. them anyway, so. Yeah. Okay. So we got that. 
passed? Yep. We voted? No. Nope. Okay, all in favor? All right, unanimous. Uh, poll hours, we have to do that. Who's going to be at the poll when? I can be there at 9 to early afternoon. Rusty, can you? I can be there in the morning and uh, till again, probably 2 or 3. I can do it after yeah. 1 or 2. After 1 or 2? Yeah, and I can tell me what. What time did you say you can be there till John? I can be there until 4. Oh, okay. Yeah, so I can be there. Yeah, I can be inside anytime pretty much from late morning on. Okay, and then we still have to come back to sign the ballots. Sign. Yes. How many yes. need at least three, right? Or That's all correct. Them. At least the majority of the board. At least okay. majority. Come back okay. when? After they finish the ballot counting and Wait, store the boxes. Well, it may not be. I, I will come back. I'll come back. Rusty will come back. And I'll come back too. If you know. So okay. we got three there. All right. Yeah, okay. That's all you need. All right. Good. Okay. So. Any closing comments? Get out and vote. Yes. <laughs> yes. Get out and vote. Don't um, complain, vote. Mr. Chairman, if the board to could entertain a motion to go into non-public session under RSA 91 hyphen capital A, colon 3, Roman 2, uh, C, reputation, and E, litigation. What okay. time? So At uh, 2045, and Regina made the motion. Second. Second. Aye. 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 Unanimous. Thank you very much, Channel 22. Mm-hmm. <laughs>